All right, now this blaster actually started about a week ago, so I'm actually a lot further on than they would normally be here to try and give you a video about exactly what's happening. But anyway, I can still show you sort of what's going on. So first off, I had to design what I was going to make it out of. Now, the main body of this thing is going to be made out of wood, okay? Now, there are all sorts of different woods you could use. For me, what I found is that by using, I can use hard maple. This is not something you can get at Lowe's. You have to actually go to a, a, a real live hardwood store. We've actually got one out in the sticks there that's actually pretty cool. Hard maple, the reason why I'm choosing it is number one, it's got such a tight grain. It's a really hard, heavy wood. It will basically stand up to virtually anything. And the fact that this thing is supposed to actually be made out of metal, it will look actually pretty good. Once I hit it with a lot of sanding and then some sandable primer, some automotive sandable primer, it's going to actually be pretty decent. And I can drop this baby on the floor and nothing will happen to it. It's actually pretty nice. Okay? So the downside of it is that it's a little harder to work than a normal, than normal like pine because it's hard. You know? It actually lathes very, very well. But you can see with this, what I've actually got going on here is my different pattern pieces. You see this part is here. We're basically cut out. I actually had to glue two pieces together. You can actually see the seam running down here. I glued two pieces together and clamped them up and then basically used my bandsaw back over there uh, to cut these pieces out as well as I could. And then I sanded them. One of the things that's tough about sanding is that uh, it can't really be too organic. It has to, you know, most of these, and all these guns were machined so that everything has to be very flat. The lines have to be really good. They have to be cut very, very well and very sharp. Everything has to fit together really pretty nicely. You can see that I used the piece here. This is only about three quarters thick. This is about an inch and a half thick. And I don't really have in my, my, um, in my research, it, I don't think I had any dimensions about exactly how thick it is. So I just had to kind of look at the pictures and kind of figure it out. Okay. You can see that this piece, the tail stock is actually pretty cool. It's actually done like this. And I had to do a lot of sanding on it. You see, it's actually got contours. I ran the grain this way because we've got a little problem here with uh, short grain. This way, this actually would be a weak spot on this. If it dropped on that, I, I could shear it there. This is, if you were using poplar, that would be a real danger. The other thing you can do is actually by using, a lot of them had a, had a butt plate because the actual real ones were made out of wood. They actually had a steel butt plate that went down here that actually had a couple of attachment points there that, that helped to protect this from getting shattered if it got dropped. And you can imagine in World War II, they were getting a lot of rough usage here. So there's a lot of detail stuff that's going to go. This is the basis of it though. And actually I've got one. I've actually got a barrel on one. And the way that I actually did this is I actually used the lathe. I made myself a little noogie there and I put everything together using dowels. Basically using a self-centering doweling jig. And there's a dowel that actually runs through there. Dowels and I don't have any out here. But anyway they're there are dowels that run through this. It's a very, very solid attachment to this. It's not just like gluing on. And I didn't do any screws, which I could have also done if I pre-drilled and then used screws, that would hold pretty well. This baby has got two dowels going that way. I got two dowels going up into this this way. This baby I just kind of glued on and I actually I shot it with my with a pneumatic stapler, but I probably don't even need to do that. And then I'm gonna fill the hole. Actually, this one I just glued on. These other babies I, I glued and I shot with my pneumatic stapler. You see all the holes there I'm going to have to fill using Bondo anyway. So it also feels like it actually is the right size. You know, when you put it in there, these things were actually made for people to be using them. It actually feels pretty good when you, when you heft it around. Okay. Um, I actually laid that little end and I actually laid this end also. These I had to be really, uh, this is actually a piece of conduit. A steel conduit that was about the right size, electrical conduit, and I basically laid it so that these babies would have to really get rammed on there when they get finished. Okay, these were laid. I actually did some file work, actually some Dremel work here. Things were, and paid attention to what the details were on the on the on the drawings and research that I had. So basically, when this gets done, basically I'm going to I'm going to pin this. I'll probably glue it with some really kick-ass epoxy, some T88 epoxy, which is a super hard, super good thing and I'll actually probably rough up the the wood a little bit so it'll really kind of get down in there and I might rough up the interior of this with a die grinder just to give it a little bit more bite but that's a little bit down the road 
because there's a lot of detail that's going to go on this. I'm actually going to do some brazing. There's actually a collar here. There's another collar here. There's a crap ton of holes in there. And I'm going to do a fake barrel down inside of it because the, it's open. It's a cooling jacket on the outside of this thing. And I'm going to use a wooden dowel in there to simulate the, the actual barrel of the real thing. So this is the start. Looks good. Does it look good with my Mandalorian outfit? I think, yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, that's the beginning of it. All right. And like I said, you could use any kind of wood you want. You could actually probably use, I wish I was, I was going back and forth, that I might even be able to use, you could use some two by 12s or two by sixes. That wood's not as good, but you know, with a lot of sanding, you could probably have it come out okay. It's actually pretty heavy lumber. You want to try and avoid knots if you can, because the knots show up. Uh, pine in general tends to be a little bit more sappy, but uh, It'll still work depending on what you're doing. There's also, you can use things like EVA foam. I would suggest it is really pretty cool if you uh, see Svetlana Quint's stuff on Kamui cosplay. Just some amazing stuff using EVA foam, which is lightweight, relatively cheap. <sighs> kind of depends on where you get it. Uh, but she also did a lot of details with that. I tend to do a little bit of that. Like I'm actually gonna use Warbla. And I'll, I could probably use a little bit of foam on this for details, but for the most part, I tend to use wood and I'm going to be using a lot of steel so and found objects and all. But sometimes I'll use foam. There are different types of projects that we'll use foam a lot more for. Okay? So, anyway, it's coming out. This is so cool. This project is going to take a while. I think that I probably have about, if I was just doing one of these, I probably have about two to three hours into it. So, so far, it's not humongously uh, crazy, but I'm also, because I'm assembly lining them, it's actually taking more time, but essentially I'll have three of them pretty easily. And I think I'll, I'll probably end up selling one, but I'll keep the other two for my collection. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, thanks.